How did your life change once the siege of Leningrad began? Но она полностью изменилась. Полностью. Даже ничего общего с прошлой жизнью нет. Абсолютно другая жизнь, если это можно назвать жизнью. After the Nazis had invaded the Soviet Union in World War II, they encircled Leningrad in an attempt to weaken one of Russia's key cities. The siege of Leningrad began on September 8, 1941, and became known as the 900-day siege. The great city of Leningrad embodied Russia's unique culture and literature since it had been the capital for almost 200 years. The city was fundamental to the rest of the Soviet Union by being its only Soviet port on the Baltic Sea and generating most of Russia's war supplies. German forces invaded Leningrad in an attempt to weaken the rest of the Soviet Union. Hitler advanced from the south and the west, while the Finns invaded from the north. The siege became more of a blockade in which Hitler prohibited the acceptance of a surrender. When sieged, the people within Leningrad went through a very difficult time in which they had little to no food, causing many to die from starvation. As the siege continues, the supplies and resources within the city dwindled rapidly, and focus was guided more on the military instead of the people within Leningrad. The Leningrad siege was singularly the most tragic event to strike a nation. Leningraders endured extreme starvation and deprivation of key resources, but their inability to surrender and persistence to triumph led to a victory when it was believed impossible. The German blockade led Leningrad to extreme changes within the city. Leningraders fought with all their might through Hitler's troops. One of the major reasons Leningrad was so easily blockaded by the Nazis was the result of Stalin's apathy toward Leningrad. Stalin was more concerned with Moscow and providing enough military forces and supplies to protect it instead of aiding in the blockade that was encompassing Leningrad. Between July and August of 1941, everyone in Leningrad between the ages 16 and 55 worked to construct tank traps and take other initiatives to defend the city. In Harrison Salisbury's 900 Days, he explains how more than 30,000 Leningraders had been mobilized to dig trenches, minefields, and dig gun emplacements, dugouts, and tank traps. During the grim winter of 1941, a road was built atop the frozen Lake Lagoda. This road was able to carry truckloads of food and resources into Leningrad and evacuate the children. The ice often shifted or cracked and many escapees fell through on their way out. The road of life, as it was called, ultimately saved the Leningraders by bringing in around 45 tons of materials and halting the German blockade. In January 1943, General Leonid Govorov and his troops were able to break apart the blockade to open a 10 mile wide corridor. The gap that the Soviets made allowed 850,000 people to be evacuated from Leningrad. A Soviet train ran through this new corridor providing resources for the Soviets, but it was under constant attack by the Germans and had to be repaired daily. The siege was declared over by Stalin when the Leningrad-Moscow line reopened on January 27th in 1944. The tragic loss of lives and the difficulties that the military faced proved how the siege of Leningrad tragically affected the citizens within it. The Nazis used the starvation of the people of Leningrad as a war tactic to weaken the city so they could easily besiege it, and it worked. The starving people were weakened by their exhaustion. Leningraders were barely able to survive throughout the siege due to the extreme cold and starvation the citizens faced. 800,000 Leningraders died from starvation alone. Resources and food quickly dwindled since they were being used to feed the armies and build military resources. Most Leningraders began to eat whatever they could find in order to survive. Eating glue, paint thinner, grass, tree bark, and belts became normal amongst the families during this time period. And that's because we didn't 
вот в делире. И вот я думала тогда, Господи, вот поесть бы иногда хлеба и умереть завтра, я бы согласилась. Leningraders became indifferent to everyone and everything other than their desire to get food. They betrayed their family and friends and ruined personal relationships for their own needs of survival. The city endured extreme conditions during the winter of 1941. The Germans had cut off the city's power prior to the freezing cold winter causing many people to freeze to death. Citizens used the wood from structures that had been destroyed by the German bombs as firewood. Leningraders began to use whatever was at hand for fuel, including books, furniture, and flooring. Bodies began to pile up in the courtyards by the hundreds. They were thrown onto the streets to be collected and sometimes laid there for days. The sight of a dead body being carried on a sled became a common occurrence in the winter of 1941. Leningrad proved its people's strength and persistence through their ability to overcome the starvation and survive the military attacks. The city was ultimately able to triumph and defeat the German Nazis. There had been patriotism at the beginning of the war, but once resources and food rapidly disappeared, so did the nationalism, which was replaced with the desire for food and survival. After the horrible winter of 1941, people became bitter due to the rough conditions that they had endured. Although there had been a strong sense of nationalism, Soviets' instincts of survival outweighed their interest in fighting. Трудно в это поверить, но истощенные, еле державшиеся на ногах воспитатели устраивали детям праздники. Вот елка, страшной зимой 42-го. Те, кто заботился о других, выживали чаще и своим примером опровергали хладнокровные расчеты ученых Третьего Рейха о неминуемой голодной смерти. Осознание высшей правоты дало Ленинграду силы бороться с врагом до последнего. In the blockade of Leningrad and the mixed results of Sovietization, Dane Burrow explains how the authorities exploited the people's deprivation and hunger to further the causes of Soviet unity and victory. Although Leningraders were besieged and bleeding, they were strong enough to withstand and challenge the German forces. The siege destroyed any sense of normality for the Leningraders, yet their ability to survive and triumph provided them with a great sense of patriotism for the city of Leningrad. The city and its people demonstrated their strength and persistence through their ability to overcome such horrors and prevail. In the Leningrad Siege and Symphony, Brian Moyanin explains how Leningrad was much more than a symbol of the Germans' coming defeat. In the sweep of their victories across Europe, it was the first great city to resist and then to overcome them. Leningrad's ability to endure military difficulties and the deprivation of key resources, yet manage to triumph amongst them, depicts their persistence to be victorious when triumph was believed inconceivable. Although Leningrad was able to ultimately come out on top, the once beautiful city had been destroyed and it took years to restore the once magnificent museums, theaters, and even the simple civilians' homes from the German shellings. The Siege of Leningrad not only depicts the strength of a nation to overcome such a tragedy, but also the horrors that come with war. It teaches society of how devastating misfortune can strike a city and nearly destroy it. The Siege of Leningrad acts as an example to the rest of the world of the terrors that come hand in hand with war. In the words of Thomas Parrish, Leningrad had survived without light, without heat, without bread, without water. It had lived because of the pride in the city, because of belief in Russia, because of the love of the people.